Good morning, y'all. It's Julie, Gulf Coast Stitches, and I'm here for a special, um, special episode. Today's January 31st. I'm going to try to make this quick, although this is my third time trying to make it quick. And I talked for like 25 minutes and was like, nobody wants to hear this. Uh, I just want to say um, that this has been a tough January. It's been hard on all of us, um, for most of us. We've all been affected by loss and grief, it feels like. Um, but what I love is that we're all here for each other and we can stab it out. Stab those feelings out on that ground cloth. Um, all right. I've done this three times, so I can't remember what I've already said. And I didn't take a bunch of notes because why would I do that? That would make sense. Um, who have I been watching on Flosstube? Michelle, the Striped Rose, and Reese. Michelle... Let me just say, <laughs> let me just say this about that. So I, as you know, had Achilles tendon surgery. I still cannot walk. I'm not on not way bearing. I have to sleep in a boot. I have to wear a boot all the time unless I'm in the shower and I have to use a knee scooter. I get to feeling real sorry for myself sometimes. Um, this healing game is as much mental as it is physical. Um, Robbie and I share the same orthopedic surgeon because, hey, besties, right? Besties are going to have the same surgeon. <laughs> um, we should really get a family discount at this point. Um, but anyway, I told her, I said, you know, our doctor said that this is as bad as it gets. Achilles tendon surgery is as bad as it gets. And then she said to me, well, you know that, but you never really know that until it's you. Totally true. Um, so I start going down the rabbit hole on Achilles surgery, healing, and how long does it take, and how fast can I get it done, and I'm a bit of a control freak, um, newsflash, and I just get in my own head when I feel like I'm not, like I want to get up and walk across the hallway or walk somewhere, and it's like a whole ordeal, and I can't do it, and I get in my head, and it gets um, a little, you know, it gets a little, I get down about it, and I was having a down moment, and then I flipped on Instagram, the angels were singing. Michelle, Michelle at the Striped Rose, I know her last name, but I don't want to use it on here, posted an Instagram still photo that she had just finished recording and she was uploading. Hallelujah. I was so excited. Um, Michelle, I love you. I'm so glad you posted a video. It was there. It was, it came at a time that I needed it. Um, and then I was watching Brenda and the Serial Starter and they said, go watch Reese. So I did that because... You do what they say, right? So that's what I've been watching. Um, I'm going to show you what I've been stitching, what I've got in the shop, and then I'm going to talk about Lost in Stitchy Wishes and a little bit about um, some loss that I've experienced both in the community and personally. What is this, I wonder? Oh, I may have multiple things stuffed in this bag. I didn't even bring my finish over. Okay. If you watched the last video, I was stitching Abbey Rose Designs, Merry Christmas, Primitive Pillow. We've all done it, or we've all seen it. Um, I have it in my Instagram when I finished it. No, I didn't use the call for colors. I used what I had because I don't have stitchy resolutions or stitchy plans, but I got a ton of floss, a ton of floss. And um, I feel like I can get close to a called for color within all of the floss I have. So that's kind of my 2020 plans is to try not to buy any floss. Um, so the two whips that I'm currently working on, my charts. I used to try to keep my charts nice, but that's gone. Eliza Garside. I saw this at market. I had to have it. And it's the first time I've ever stitched in wool. And I wish more charts I hope more people come out with charts with wool because it's a single strand situation. On um, 32, the coverage is amazing. And I just can't even tell you enough um, how much I love stitching with wool. So here's where I'm at with this one, Eliza Garside. Oh, Eliza Garside the 17. I know you're probably gonna be able to see right through this, but I have a confession. Everyone hates, no, that's not fair. That's not a good word, and it's not fair to say everyone. You hear a lot of talk that people don't like the old 
the old weeks that stitch in hand. Mm -mm, I love it. I'm a weeks. I love it. I like Zweigart, but I love that I have the choice to have something a little looser and floppier. So I hope that they don't convert everything to Zweigart because then everybody has the same base fabric. So I don't know. I haven't tried legacy linen yet. Maybe that'll be my stitchy, my a lost in stitchy wishes wish. So this is where I'm at. I made my way around the berries, except for right here. I'm stitching along, minding my own business, watching Michelle, the striped rose. And that's probably my mistake because I'm trying to, I, that's one, her, her floss tubes I watch with my eyeballs, not with my ears. And I missed the little green part right here, so I couldn't put the last little berry in. But um, I've come really far on this, so I have to finish a lot. But I've come a long way. So I love that. Absolutely love, love, love stitching with the shaker. And that's the Gentle Arts Wools that I'm using for that. And then I have another sampler that will be up after this one that's also wool. And Robbie found I was missing one stinking color of wool. And it needed like five skeins. And she found them for me when she was out on tour. So Robbie goes out on tour. Y'all may have seen her. Um, this is what my other whip. And I didn't use called for colors because, again, I'm stitching what I want to with what I got handy. And right now I can't get upstairs. I talked about that in a previous video. So I'm stitching with whatever's downstairs. And this is what we ended up with. So all I have done, this is the tiniest of starts. Let's see, how is this oriented this way? So I've, I'm using, um, what is that pink color? I'm going to look that, I'm going to look at that. Let me look at that because I, I'm, I really like it. I just literally, I just dropped it. Ah, it's hard for me to pick up stuff off the ground. Real hard. Persimmon. I just dropped the whole skein of floss, but here's the card. So, persimmon. It's this beautiful melon color. Oh, so persimmon and honeycomb and uh, who knows what. Um, oddball. It kind of looks... I don't know what color that is. It's an oddball. It was a shortcut. Um, occasionally, the General Arts will sell like their miss, their seconds or whatever you want to call that. Their culls, as we call them here in the South. So that's a cull. That's a cull skein. Um, and it's my persimmons on the floor. But I just thought it was super pretty. And different. But I'm into it. So that's what I'm working on now. But Eliza is calling to me. And then I will start Baby It's Cold Outside. This, look, what is going on here? There's a Linda Joe project bag. Everything's jammed in one bag. Oh, sorry, I don't have that under control. Anyway, what else am I into? I pulled this out of the fridge when I made my coffee and I kept it out to show you. I don't like homebrewed coffee that much. I've tried all the fancy coffee machines and all the flavors of coffee, and um, they all, I just can't get it right. The 1850 coffee grounds and this pumpkin spice creamer, this creamer is like thick. I know it's probably full of a horrible things for me, but um, it is 40 calories per tablespoon. I use two tablespoons, 80 calories delicious. So if you haven't tried the Starbucks creamer and you like Starbucks, it does something to kind of cut the bitterness of the homebrewed coffee down to me. Um, anyway, what do I have in the shop? I'm trying to go fast because I have been, literally, I've been talking for like two hours because I keep redoing this video. Um, got a package from Beth Twist this past, well, it's been about a week and a half ago, but surgery surgery brain kind words never die let that sink in for a minute 
Kind words never die. Amazing, cute chart. Super, be a super quick stitch. You could stitch it in any color you want, although her colors are always awesome. Uh, I've got that one. And then this is a companion to a few other samplers that I also have of hers. Um, this is the Peace Band sampler. There's also my funny Valentine, and there's a Christmas one. And they're great. They're they're band samplers, but they've got that heartstring samplery touch to them, which is one of my favorite things. Ugh, I have a hair somewhere. Do y'all ever have that happen? Keeping it real, y'all. I'm not editing. If I were an editor, I, I would say I don't have time to edit, but if I were an editor of videos, I wouldn't have, be, have to record this three times, so. Hmm. Couldn't get through it the first time. Second time I talked way too much, and here we are again. All right. A few things. You never know what people have going on. You never know um, the degree of which they, how well they are or they aren't. I feel like the floss tube community was stunned by the loss of Leanne from Lost in Floss. Um, Leanne was battling cancer, and I feel like I just was sitting with her and Barb. They were in my living room on TV, and the next time I turned on, Instagram, I saw that she had passed, and it was, um, it that's hard to reconcile, right? Because we see people on TV or our computer or our phone, we feel like we know them really well, and we really feel the loss when they're not there anymore. That has happened um, with losing Leanne, and that has happened for many with. Um, losing celebrities and I'm gonna ask that you please don't post anything negative in the comments but um, the, lo the loss of Kobe Bryant affected a lot of a lot of people especially young people and people who um, um, if you're a basketball fan or not it's just another one of those like wow mortality checks that you know it can happen today could be anybody's last day. Um, Sarah, my, my phone is not on silent. If it rings or texts, it's because Sarah is on her way home from college because we have a funeral to attend tomorrow. Um, we lost a beautiful, beautiful soul on the 22nd of January. We lost my niece, Brooke. She's my niece by marriage, but um, she was 28 years old, leaves behind a nine-year-old daughter and a husband and two grieving parents and a sister who is the sweetest, it, her sister has this, just the sweetest spirit and, um, is just carrying the burden of having lost her sister and worrying about taking care of her parents through this because they are not okay. Um, Brooke lost her battle with mental illness. She's an army veteran. She did um, several tours overseas, including Kuwait and Afghanistan. And um, she fought that dragon for a a good long fight and she lost that fight on the 22nd. So I'm trying not to get too choked up because it's just so sad. Um, so anyway, lots and lots of loss, lots of loss in 2020 already. Um, lots of loss that seems hard to reconcile. Um, many of you didn't know that Leanne was sick because she was always so bright and bubbly and cheerful and well. And if you didn't know, because I hadn't told you, you wouldn't know that I have to get around on wheels, that I can't walk. And those things are things that we just don't know from what we see on a screen or a TV. Those are, you know, losing Leanne, who, who if you didn't know she had an illness, was especially shocking. If you did know she had an illness. It's it's angering and frustrating and doesn't seem fair at any rate. Um, losing people who are seemingly well and here today and happy and 
beautiful and um, generous and kind. And then their light just goes out like instantly is very, um, that's just tough to reconcile. So, wow. I'm kind of surprised that this is the third time I've done this and I've still gotten choked up about it because it's just all real fresh, right? Okay. So anyway, I say all that to say tomorrow was not promised and I just was ready to have some um, happiness and ready to have something to make us all smile in the community and in my house and um, I just love the whole idea of love rippling out. That is a, a thing that I feel really, um, it's something that moves me. It's, it's part of um, doing good works, I think. Um, I'm not interested in anybody's religion or politics or what they think about fandom or media or any of that, but um, my Christian heart loves the ripple effect of doing good works for other people. And um, I saw sometime that Jen had po Jen from Quirks and Stitches had posted that she was going to um, like blow the dust off of her copy of um, Baby It's Cold Outside and she was going to stitch that because Barb and Leanne had a sow, Baby It's Cold Outside sow, um, and she was going to do that in honor of Leanne. Well, I have that chart. I love that chart. I want to do that too. And then the um, visionary thinker that I am, like, kicks into high gear especially I look I'm especially dangerous um <laughs> I'm especially dangerous if I am in a highly heightened emotional state I will get um really fired up and I'll take off running with something you may know that like two years ago I got really salty about um some horrible customer service in the cross stitch world and I was like I'm gonna open a business here we are two years later still doing it. Um, I think I got mad one day and the next day I went and got my business license. So I just felt broken open between the loss of um, just just being inundated with the, you know, the imagery of just the reality of loss. Like Leanne, I, I don't know Leanne on a outside of the floss tube community basis like Barb does. Barb. I love you. I lift you up. I know that um, so many people love you and, and are feeling your loss. She lost her person, her best friend for her whole life virtually. Um, I am broken open because a 28-year-old beautiful mother and veteran, a person who, who went and served her country and left her baby at home while she did this, like, her daughter is nine, she's 28, and served several tours overseas. I mean, you can do the math. There were lots of time that she was putting service over self. And um, I'm just so sad that that she um, didn't win that, that last war. And then um, Kobe Bryant, senseless. Like, here's a person who does good in the world makes a ton of money, does good things with it, and has a beautiful family and is a, an amazing hashtag girl dad. And it's just all, ugh, I was just feeling the feels. And I was like, you know what, Jen? I'm going to stitch this chart with you. And let's see if we can, uh, let's see if I can do some, somehow do some good with it. Because I'm just tired of all the, every time I turn the TV on, it's like, ugh, or, inst you know, whatever. I'm just tired of the 2020 starting off so crappy. So let's do something good. So I reached out to Beth Twist, who is the designer behind the Baby It's Cold Outside chart through uh, Heartstring Samplery. I reached out to Beth and I said, may I have your permission to sell your charts at wholesale cost? I will purchase them from you. I will sell them at cost. I will make no money off of this. And then whatever money I do, the money that comes in to cover the cost, I will um, use that money to purchase other charts at wholesale and gift those to stitchers who might not otherwise be able to have one, or maybe it's just something that they that would bring them joy. Well, 
my faith in humanity is restored every day. Every day I see, I hear something, I see something. For as much negativity as there is out there, there's also people shining lights. And oh, try not to do, I'm trying not to fall apart, y'all. This is going to be hard to post because I feel really vulnerable. All right. So I reached out to Beth and I said, hey, is it all right if I sell your charts at cost? And she said, no, I'll do you one better. I'll donate them. And then you can take that, whatever you get from the sale of it and grant stitchy wishes forward for other people. So that's what we did. And talked to Jen. She was like, oh, this is so exciting. And then I went and... I put it on my website, the chart for $5, and then I went to sleep and I woke up and they were all sold out. That's not, I mean, that happens. Um, but then the hundreds and hundreds of emails happened. And then I talked to Beth and said, um, wow, the response has been overwhelming. I'm very, um, you know, grateful and gracious and I'm so sorry if this caused an insane amount of work for you because, you know, hey, printing and packing and shipping and all of that, excuse me, I don't want to be, um, I'm definitely a little weepy today. Um, I didn't want that to, uh, like I was concerned of how, how much work that was going to create for her and then I looked again I started writing down all the orders for people who did it and my numbers were off. It, it extremely off. And I thought, oh my goodness, I did not put the inventory control button on my website, which is a feature that you have to activate every single time you list a project, a product. And I looked and it was on there. And it had allowed me to go negative a whole lot of charts <laughs> so I called the webmaster and I said hey did I do something wrong what's going on here this is a problem and he got back with me and said um y'all just broke the internet momentarily broke the internet so many people checked out instantaneously that the algorithm didn't handle it um, yeah, what, I mean, wow. <laughs> so I had to make, I text Jen and was like, I need to tell Beth and I don't know how this is going to go because there's nothing like saying, thank you so much for the donation that you've already been so gracious for, but I need, I'm going to need some more. Well, that's what I had to do because that's what you got to do. You got to, you got to pull up your pants and woman up and say, Hey, I need the, I need your help here. And, um, I didn't hear back from her for a little while, which was concerning to me. So I contacted the distributors, all three U S distributors. Nobody has charts. So she had been out and about for the day. She, she got in touch with, in touch with me when she came home and said, um, I have so many orders on my Etsy shop for this chart that I have absolutely no problem donating the balance. What what you're short, no problem. Wow, um, that was a huge sigh of relief because I could not imagine. I mean, I knew that eventually they'd get reprinted and we would get them, and that wasn't an issue. But I didn't expect her to. Um, I didn't expect my good idea to create so much work for Beth. That wasn't my intention. And then here we are. So, um, the hashtag is hashtag lost in stitchy wishes. What you do is you go on Instagram, you, you take some photos of charts that a chart or multiple charts that you wish you had. Posting a stitchy wish doesn't mean that you can't afford the chart. You don't have means to get it. It's out of print. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means that Getting this chart would make you happy. Getting this chart, getting a piece of happy mail that contained this chart would, would brighten your day. And either myself or another stitcher in the Stitchiverse will hopefully grant that wish. Hopefully. Um, my stomach's growling because I've been sitting here doing this so long. It's time for lunch.
past time for lunch. It's one o'clock. So, um, you, you go to the hashtag, you post a photo of what you wish you had and myself or somebody else hopefully will make it happen. You're not limited to prints, to out of print unicorns. You're not limited to cross stitch charts. You might wish you had a hoop or you might wish you had a Q-snap or you might wish you had a project bag and somebody somewhere may have that that they would be happy to part with to make you happy, right? Um, we, most of us have more stitching than we'll ever be able to do. We all know that collecting is part of the hobby. Um, and I believe that most people are good. And I believe that most people, if they say that they're going to grant your wish, will do so. The only thing, uh, there's a few, just some housekeeping I want to say with this. And I'm going to wrap up this video because this is a mess. Um, the, um, one thing I posted a post on Instagram that kind of created a little bit of a stir. Um, I think we've got it all worked out now and everybody's okay, but um, I can't grant every wish. And I'm not going to pay inflated eBay prices for charts um, with the proceeds that have come in from the first wave of purchases of Baby It's Cold Outside. I have a finite amount of, of sales that came through from that. I received a few donations um, for people. There were people there were people messaging me saying, can I buy 30 or 40 or 20, 30, 40, 5, 2 charts? I would like one and send the rest out to the world for me. It blows my mind. Um, but at this point, today's January 31st, moving forward, um, I'm not going to be getting any more of the charts in from Beth because I don't feel like that's fair. I also feel like I have to know my limitations, right? I'm, I'm, I'm in my own grieving process for my family member. I'm going to have, uh, I'm physically healing, which is a whole emotional thing. And, um, I want this to be something that, that is, that is, um, it's the ripple. It's not like how many, it, what the goal was never like, how many charts can I sell at cost and see what I can do? No, it was, I want to see people take care of each other. And if you bought this one $5 chart and I was able to gift another chart to somebody else, and then they turned around and gave something out of their stash, that is the spirit in which I want to want it and still want to honor Leanne. So, um, at this point, I have hundreds of emails on my website. I sent Jen a screenshot of literally thousands of inbox messages, hundreds of which were directly related to this. And um, people saying, please let me know when you get more charts. Please let me know when you get more charts. I'm telling you now, I'm making this post, I'm not going to be ordering any more of these charts. If you want to participate in the sale and you don't have the chart, I encourage you to go to Beth Twist's Heartstring Samplery Etsy page and buy it from her directly. I am all for supporting LNSs. I am all for supporting um, online shops. I'm an online shop. But when you purchase directly from the designer, they get 100% of the proceeds of that purchase, minus whatever fees and all that stuff that are involved on their end. And Beth has been incredibly generous, and it's the way we can be generous back to her. I checked her Etsy site this morning. She, she doesn't have it marked out of stock, so there are, um, you can go there and buy it. And it may take a few days because she's printing like a lunatic in the best way um, to try to get all of those charts um, printed. And, you know, the when you get a chart like this, somebody somewhere is printing it, folding it, and putting it in this envelope, in this little plastic baggie. Think about that. Now think about somebody volunteering to do that. Hundreds and hundreds of times. <laughs> um, so anyway, buy directly from Beth if you can. If your LNS is out, I'm not going to take a waiting list. I can't manage it. I'll miss somebody. Somebody's films will get hurt. I am not here to hurt anybody. So the sow will go on forever. I'm a slow stitcher. I'm going to start it on the 14th. It might take me a year to finish it. This, this hashtag will not go away. Hashtag lost in stitchy wishes will not go away. Hashtag 
baby, it's cold outside, Sal will not go away. Participate when you can, how you can. Now, I've said this so many things so many times, I may have said this already. I'm not paying inflated eBay prices. I'm not taking the um, the the five dollar um, incremental um, deposits in that were made into my account and spending them on a hundred fifty dollar chart. But you know what the great news is? Your unicorn that cost $150, $200, somebody's probably sitting on it and they may be willing to share it with you. So post it. I, I don't want to discourage anybody from posting anything. Post away and you never know what you'll get. Um, you absolutely never know. You don't know. You won't get it if you don't post that you would like it or that it would make you happy. So um, I have, as of today, I have sent out six worth that were things that I had here um, in my shop that I was able to send out. And I have ordered 16, 16, I think 16 more. As soon as I get confirmation that they are in the mail um, from the distributor, I will post um, wish, wish granted. So how it works is you put a picture of what you would like to have. Nobody cares what it is. It could be anything. It could be a pair of scissors. It could be anything stitchy related. And um, if you're if you are on that hashtag and you see that somebody really wants this chart, whatever it is, somebody is. Uh, let's see. What's one? So, let's see. What's one that I ordered? If you see that somebody really wants Frosty's Night Out, let's say, from Blackbird Design, and you have it, you finished it, you're done with it, and you would like to grant it to them, or you would just like to send them your copy, or you would like to buy it and send it to them, you can put Wish, wish Granted on their thread and then have them PM you with their address. I just ask that if you say that you wish that you're granting a wish that you do it, like follow through, right? Um, and as soon as I put your charts in their packages, that's when I put wish granted, okay? So um, for those of you who may have posted on the first day and you're like, hey, wait, other people's wishes are getting granted, I'm just waiting for confirmation that your chart's coming to me because I'd hate to say that I can give you something that I can't. Uh, let's see. I think, that, I think I've just about beat that into the ground. So love each other. Don't assume everybody's okay, and um, s spread it, share it, ripple it out there. Let's see, uh, Leanne would be thrilled. She would be laughing and gigg giggling in that contagious, infectious laugh that we all know through the TV, through her videos. We know that laugh. She would be, I think she would be stunned at, at the response for this, so... Um, please understand why I'm. I'm just. I, I'm not gonna do. Um, I'm not gonna list any more of the five dollar charts on my shop. If you would like one, please, please go to Heartstring Samplery um, on Etsy and get a copy there. Get it where you can get it, however you can get it, and um, let's let's put some some stitches in and remembrance of Leanne. And someone had sent me a message, and I'm sorry I didn't write down the name. Who you can imagine my inbox is. I mean. I had to turn off my Instagram notifications because it was just insanity. Um, somebody mentioned stitching somewhere on the chart of R Little Red Cardinal to um, signify Leanne. I'm here for that. I'm doing it. Um, I believe I, I, I believe that when you see a red bird, it's the spirit of somebody you love. And I want to look on that chart and see a red bird. That's for sure. So that's what I'm going to do. And do I have a template? No. Do I know what I'm doing? No. I'm just going to make an over one red bird somewhere on the chart. <laughs> if somebody wants to chart that out and send it to me, well, that might be a good idea. Um, I think I have plenty of charts that have little red birds on them somewhere that I could um, make that work. So I think that's all I have to say about all of that. That's a lot. 35 minutes again. Um, I'll try to pop on Instagram. I'm gonna. I know not everybody watches floss tube, so I'll, I'll do a really shortened, condensed, non-emotional version of this on Instagram. I hope, and I hope that you find some time to stitch today. I hope that um, you have a wonderful stitchy week. I hope that February is better for all of us than January was. I hope you had a fantastic January. Um, I love you all, and 
I probably missed stuff. I probably said stuff twice. I don't know. Um, I'm usually real good about replying on social media and to emails, but please understand that I'm out of pocket a little bit right now, and I'll do what I can. So, have a great one. Love y'all. Bye.